Hey, welcome to the Travis Transfer. Hi. It's been a while, three weeks. I don't know. It's it a feels whole new like year. it. Yeah, it feels like a while. Yet. We're I'm starting to yeah, move. Yeah, first week. Didn't I think. we play once in sure. 2020? Oh, sounds good. Yeah. It's now the world of tomorrow. That's right. We talked about 2020. <laughs> Today. Uh, welcome yeah. to the world of tomorrow. Mm. Today. Uh, an actual anyway, Traps Transfer is. If in case you're curious, and this is the first time you've ever logged into us, uh, we are an actual play podcast. Hey. Oh well, wow! I gotta go. I know. Done. Wait. Whoa. Hold on. I only take mine in the past. Uh, using the Eclipse Phase RPG, uh, we set this in a fictional sci-fi future uh, of our own making with Earth and humankind. I'm um, Will Blackmore, and I'll be your game master this evening, uh, weaving a web of intrigue for our players. Ashley and Bradley playing Truth Seeker, Mark Jondal playing Comms 3, Evie playing Caster, uh, Connor Crumley normally playing uh, Penelope Gray will not be here tonight, uh, but Penelope will, will make some moments be involved in the uh, uh, in the storyline. Um, and tonight we have a special guest star, uh, Bill Bryan, who runs all of this wonderful bits. We are in his room, his playroom. Closet uh, Goblin. Closet Goblin. I am the Closet Goblin. Often giggling <clears throat> off camera. Um, we'll be playing the role of Charlie Maines, the pilot tonight, who's hanging out with Abby last we, last we checked it out. Cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I guess with, with Caster, not you, but you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't out me. I didn't make my character be me. That's not it. That's not what happened. Yeah, that's not at all how role playing is. That there's elements of yourself and everything. Oh God, it's terrifying. Mm -hmm. Um, so before we get started, um, I, as per always, I think getting us into the, the mindset of bits, um, I wanted to share just a, a funny apocalyptic sci-fi future that we may actually uh, go through at some point. But it is deep in the future of, uh, of humanity. Uh, I wouldn't stress about it or put it on your calendar, but I was having a conversation uh, with some, uh, some fellow professors this week. Like, overheard it, right? And this is a great moment where you have people who are, are in, like, adjacent academic fields and don't always understand the implications of something that they heard. They're just like, oh, shiny. Like, this is a funny science article. And so there's this physicist uh, who was talking about, uh, he went to a conference and he was listening, he was moderating it, um, and he was listening to basically this, this um, uh, talk by, by this woman who was doing computer model simulations of star uh, motion in the galaxy. Mm -hmm. Fascinating, really cool stuff, and like taking it several like million years out in the future. Um, and at that point, you can see the motion of the stars like around the galaxy, right? Like for our star at our distance, it takes 220 million years to go like one orbit around the center, right? And we're pulling it at like uh, half a million miles an hour, right? Like at that speed, all the way around for a long time. Um, with that, stars also sort of like dip up and down through the galactic planes. We're kind of like on this like big carousel, if you can kind of visualize that. Um, you know, there's some local motions, other things happen, and according to our data, in about, I don't know, a few hundred million years or so, um, a star should pass through our solar system. Okay. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, you know, this guy was just casually saying this off in one of the cubes off to the side, and this other other guy was like, oh, it's really interesting, like, oh man, we'll have, like, two stars in our solar system, that'd be really cool, a binary star system. <laughs> and both myself and the other astronomer in, in the cubes, like, meerkat up, like, pop up, like, whoa. That's terrifying, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, it was, doesn't really matter what size star this is. Do you know roughly where they're expecting it to come through? They're like, I don't know, maybe between like 10 and 20 AU. And I'm like, so between Saturn and Uranus, like it's going through the center of our solar system. Like this is the equivalent of like the, the bowling pins being like, I think it'd be kind of fun if a bowling ball just happens to like roll through. How bad <laughs> can that be? And I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah. maybe they'll miss all the pins. Yeah, well, even if it misses all the pins, funny thing about gravity. <laughs> Yeah. Of something massive, yeah, yeah. Just casually, really, let let alone the entire journey. As we're like, see that bright <clears throat> spot that's getting bigger in the sky over the course of you know ten ten thousand years, knocking comets out of its way. It's just okay. So I mean, I th I'm thinking that it would probably reset life. Oh yeah, no. Like, well, <laughs> what's going to be a, like on Earth or even what uh, the solar system looks like in half a million well, years anyway? But it, and ever, anywhere else, well, I mean, that, that might was be. the big I mean, thing. We, a billion, I guess, yeah, right. Now. Yeah. Have you guys ever seen that theory about the Big Bang? It's like actually like everything's happening in reverse from it. Like the Benjamin Button universe? Yeah. Or... yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, I the, did the find The time, out... time may be actually going backwards. I found out this weekend that the, the, the <laughs> reason we call it a Big Bang is the, the guy who coined that actually said it as a joke. Yeah, like, as a mockery. Not a, not a bag. Yeah, yeah, and he right. and he was like very much like the type of person that would talk down to people and stuff. So he was like, "Yeah, the Big Bang," and like now we've just been talking about that. 
Everyone's sense. like, oh, this is a smart guy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> a, a, there is Super no sarcasm. sound in a vacuum. Right. Mm-hmm. There is no bang. But right, well, but even... It's the, like there was yeah, that's the thing. Is even like the, the feeling or like the explosion huge. or the idea that it would happen in right. that fashion. But, yeah. but bang is an onomatopoeia, so... If nothing, it, is, it if nothing or no noise. one or no entity is there to hear it, then there is no sound anyway. Right. Right? right? So... Right. No, there's no noise. There's still sound. There's just no noise. Is there though? Because sound is just I, I'm firm perception on this of one. noise. I'm firm. I'm firm. I on don't that. go into this. I love the things that you take stands on. <laughs> <laughs> right there. You're like, no, I'm super firm. My tastes are really random. Let me tell you how firm I am. Is that yeah. Yeah. I guess you do know uh, sound better than frame rate. That, 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 that being said, no. okay, cool. Yeah, that, possibly. That being said, speaking of noise and sound, or in space, there is one scenario, and maybe if things go terribly wrong for the Trappist transfer. That y'all run into it at some point, uh, but gravitational waves. So uh, when black holes are orbiting around each other, but just about ready to crash in, right? They're like literally like banging on the fabric of reality, like they are fluctuating space, like expanding. Yeah, and, wa- and waves are just coming off of it. Yeah, literally. So like it would, it would stretch yeah. you, right? Like, and it's more intense as you get closer. Um, so right, if you're close, I mean, you have problems being this close to black holes orbiting each other anyway, but if you're close watching this process happen, even though there's no air for sound to move through, that's physically stretching and warping your eardrums, you would hear it ringing right before the black holes like slam together. Even if you're in like a space suit and a helmet, you would hear space ringing. How crazy Ooh, is that? Ooh, right? yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, right, right. Literally having right. your bell rung. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Before you die terribly. <laughs> It's not atoms are ripped to pieces. Well, but but your perception of time would be so distorted by that point that that you, yeah, right? Eh, no? if, you, if you're in it, you're, it's it's more like other people watching you would be weird. But that's not getting the time dilation. That should okay. take us down a rabbit okay. hole. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, I guess we get five minutes of playing today. That's good. <laughs> and we'll see you tomorrow. But that, <laughs> but that is why I like drinking with you. Yeah. Well, it's later. Because that's a really important question. Does anybody have an extra pencil around them? Because I cannot yeah. find one. Yeah. How many you need? Just one. No. Thank you. I won't, like, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. There was none with the Do you need milk duds, too? Like, if I don't too? Have now, I'm not going to take Do any. Do you want to write with chocolate? We have, have, ooh, you can just melt it. No, I they, like, they like I, milk duds. It's I their favorite. I promise I will not consume your character at that point, though. Like, mm, my notes. <laughs> chocolate notes. Oh, gross. Mm, chocolate nose. I feel like that would look like. Never mind. Let's, let's change the subject. Like what? Game. Game. Uh, game. Yeah, that's where we're going to do it. Um, all right, so uh, where we left off, uh, it's, we've, we've kind of had a little bit of a protracted uh, battle and some other bits happening. Um, rewind us back, I think, to the, the olden days, 2019. Uh, y'all had come out of the uh, the virtual into the real world because Pollux uh, had told you that there is yet another flare from the sun coming your direction, um, and you had to go out as sort of like emissaries to assess what was happening in the real world, and then um, help like figure out a way to like course correct or at least avoid this incoming uh, solar flare. Um, when you got out, going through that terribleness that is Bree leaving, uh, you met Charlie Maines, who is the sort of first among pilots right now, who's uh, you know. Functionally a, a, a captain, if you will, for the ship, right? Not I know I am. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Andine Zubermanian, right? The solar physicist who uh, was sort of briefing you in the process. That so, <laughs> wait, what, what's his name? Uh, Andine. He's the one with me. Or they're the one with me. Mm-hmm. They're, and what is, they're watching the telemetry. So. And what, what is their function? Uh, they are a solar physicist. Okay. So, uh, scientist head honcho at the moment, right? Mm-hmm. He's a scientician. First amongst scientists? As long as it's not a Scientologist, then we're good. Oh my god, I'm having incredibly powerful deja vu right now. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which is impossible. You have that, never been in this I'm, that, Well, I, I was in the corner happening? one time, but yeah. Just to be clear, that does often happen, happen with me sleeving. Uh, yeah. Is that. yeah. No, I know. I know. It's freaking me out. Yeah. Okay, continue. <laughs> Science. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Gonna set the timer for funsies. Uh, so you all came out, met Andine. You went off to Astrometrics, where they kind of showed you the uh, what was happening and how it really. There's strange readings from the sun, where this literally is a directed solar flare, which is really strange and unusual. Mm-hmm. And you're kind of getting the impression that maybe the sun's firing at you, or something is causing the sun to fire at you. Uh, so, uh, I believe Andine and Charlie proposed uh, an idea to help solve a lot of the problems, which was instead of course correcting and getting out of the way of the flare, uh, you'll do that, but you will also cut closer to the sun to accelerate, get a little, one more like massive gravitational uh, assist out of the solar system, but also uh, mass scoop up more material uh, that you could use to start 
um, uh, you know, crafting more things on the ship, perhaps creating a better, uh, like, real world for people to, um, from the virtual to kind of like populate, perhaps eventually, and also um, more fuel, uh, fusion reaction material from the sun uh, to be able to kind of hopefully boost uh, the output from the reactor. Uh, although it is a bit of a risk, since you are going towards the barrel of the gun uh, that is firing at you currently. Um, but you needed to do this as quick as possible, right? Because turning a ship is not an easy thing, um, and your window is narrowing very fast. Um, shortly after that, uh, power went out, or at least things went down to minimum efforts. You were shown that the reactor was on red, you were seeing that the, the data core was having a lot of issues, uh, and basically things are, are reaching a crux, right? So you all split off split the party, uh, appropriately though, um, to go handle multiple pieces. Um, I believe uh, Penelope and Comms 3 were heading towards the rear of the ship to go address uh, the reactor for you and the data core for Penelope. Uh, Com or not Comms, um, True Seeker stuck behind with Andine to uh, handle astrometrics and kind of like uh, navigate pieces for the, for the pilots. Mm -hmm. uh, and Charlie and uh, Keep wanting to say your name. Your character. <laughs> uh, Caster uh, headed for like headed forward to the bridge, um, but y'all met with various forms of resistance as the ship was sort of I don't know going through programming issues. But I think last we checked, we everybody had sort of gotten out of uh, their particular uh, conundrum. So I want to go around the table real fast. Also remind yourself, remember where you are and exactly what happened, like where we left off with you, and then we'll kind of just quickly and we'll go around. Okay, you want to start? Mm -hmm. So, um, me and Andine talked about it and decided to, like, have Andine hide so that they could follow through what we were supposed to be doing for Charlie. Mm -hmm. And I got the boss' attention and led them into the service tunnels. And after, like... great. They definitely followed you yeah, into the service and after, tunnels. like, some serious maneuvering, a couple of slip-ups, I managed to, like, get down a little offshoot quarter, and I'm currently, like, wedged between, like, a couple of, like, heating pipes so they wouldn't see me with their, like, infrared vision. Mm -hmm. And they passed me. Oh. And I was planning to circle back, but that's where we left off. Nice, perfect. Good for you. I'll have you speak for Penelope too. But I'll be running Penelope for this part. <coughs> well, I, I, I remember a, a fairly chaotic uh, battle in in which uh, I sleeved in in a you know like spider robot you know like maintenance bot looks like a spider. Fight another robots look like spiders. Um, and and I was spending most of my time trying to trying to hack into them and give them commands. Mm -hmm. And I I came up with a with a command for for and I had to do them one by one. I couldn't I could not do this like globally across the net. There's I was no mass jacking. Yeah, I, I pretty much had to hard jack into the spiders individually and give them orders. And, and but I did manage to get some of them to. To um, like change their priorities, or to or no, not change their priorities, but change. Did you start ripping each other apart? Right, like I like I said, uh, we're not the trash; they're the trash, basically. Because they, well, they were they were busy cleaning up, and they thought that, and they were everything that was there, they were destroying. Mm -hmm. So I so I just said the other bots are um, trash; we are not, and then it. it and it went off. And, then and it agreed with you. It agreed with me, and it went off. And, and uh, affirmative. Mm -hmm. But uh, but that's where I lose my my memory of what of the chain of events. I was right about it. I think both of you. And Pen um, Penelope was was doing the same. Was kind of doing the same thing, trying to and ended up like ultimately like prying the door open. Or right. We we got like out of the chamber the door with some weird maneuver. Didn't well, she? yeah, she busted her head through the door <clears throat> yeah. with some weird maneuver. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and in full Connor, shout out to you. Uh, there were some terror rolls that happened. <laughs> maybe like you know, I'm gonna try to program the door and ended up headbutting the door. It's like it was a series of things, right? Yeah. Just, yeah. I think leaping for it or something just went terribly wrong. Yeah, I'd have to watch the video on that. <laughs> uh, uh, so Pretty sure we were to like flip through the little crack. Yeah, no, I mean, that's that was the thing, and they had butted the door. Yeah. <laughs> Clipped the edge. Um, so we were in an elevator shaft trying to get up to the main deck where the captains and things are um, to try to steer this whole business, and we also encountered the spiders. Oh, and that was terrifying, the, the spiders crawling up the... Right, well, and it's, it was terrifying shaft. because, Ooh. like... Lord only knows when the last time we were all actually sleeved. So, like, we were all dealing with sort of, like, 
varying amounts of sleeve sickness and like mm-hmm. being able to control one's body and like get the heck up some ladders as fast as possible. Um, so we were, we, we kind of heard them coming. We were trying to do it as fast as possible mm. and we were trying to get to the level we needed. Um, and if I remember right, like they were coming on us and like, we were like, basically ready to fight because I hadn't gotten close enough Mm -hmm. and they passed us Mm -hmm. and so initially it was like a huge freaking relief like oh cool we don't have to fight that um and then we started to sort of like hear some real weird noises and there's like an because we're in an elevator shaft there's got to be an elevator in here and of course it can't be below us it has to be above us um so then it became really imperative to get to this level and through this door so that uh, this elevator that these bots have decided was no longer useful to us didn't fall on us. Um, Mm. And there was a couple mess ups in that, some slipping, some arm tearing, some, I don't know if you remember this, like not off. But like yeah, no, 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 no. no. But like, or, or, or uh, so there's a bad roll that happened. Yeah, yeah. No, so for both like of us. Crank a door open. Yeah, we were trying to crank a door open, but like you kind of had to, you know, because you're in an elevator shaft, you kind of had to like splay yourself out and like bend out of reach and like. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, the thing is, like, some as the robots were were cutting through the the emergency brakes, to like metal shards and pieces were falling, right, and mm-hmm. clanging by, and like some of those also clipped you as it was. Yeah, like, was yeah, I remember that. It's all um, bad. That part was all bad, but we did finally <laughs> do bad. it. Uh, still alive for for now. Still kicking. Right? <laughs> still kicking. Um, and that's most... Well, so that's mostly where my detailed memory ends. Um, good. And then I know that we did make it to the bridge, and then I do vaguely remember the power going out and just being like, fuck. Yeah, you were, you were just about to make it to the bridge. You had not quite made it in there. Got it. Yeah. Cool. Good recap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Charlie, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember driving the ship. That's, That's about it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Bill is far better at doing accents. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, that. Here's, here's Charlie. That's what they pay you for. That's what I, yeah, that's what they, they pay me for. Mm-hmm. You pay yourself? I mean, I, I, I get a living wage. It's fine. Nice. Um, all right, so a couple things. So we'll we'll start off with with all of you. Um, but uh, uh, comms three, make me a. I'll check some things here. Um, hardware check. What is your what is your score on hardware? Well, hardware are like specific things. Like my hardware is electronic. Oh, it's like a narrow specific yeah. things I've got. What's your hardware, hardware that you have? Um, if that, I'm all, I'll also take like. I don't know. I'll take networking from you actually. Sorry, I wasn't trying to. No, no, that's good. I, I well, that's like, a good point. We, like, no, I don't know because I because when I created this character, I did not know what my nature was. So, my hard hardware. Well, networking. What is your networking skill? Um. Ugh, where is networking? That's a good question. Should be on there. Nice. Um, it's not in the skills. Here, let me see your uh, let me see your sheet for a second. Maybe I'm thinking of something else, or I might have an outdated sheet on there. Like infosec. I think info sec. I thought you had a, 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 a piece that was networking. I feel like but. networking falls under like one of them, like maybe hardware. I feel like I saw it in the book somewhere. Um, interface for you. I would in- take interface. interface. I would take yeah. interface for this one. <clears throat> so uh, make an interface roll. Right. You're kind of thinking Goal about some 80. of the protocols that you you saw with the the local net when you were jacking into the bot. Um, right. And so like some of that's rolling for you. So it's it's eighty. Eighty. Cool. Seventy-two. Ooh, Eighty-two. that is a high roll, which is what you want, but under another eighty. So right. great. High, but not too. Um, high. Cool. Uh, so it's like Price is Right rule. Yeah. You you realize that. Um, there are like uh, there is a separate network uh, that is interfaced between the maintenance bots, um, and now that you you had like sort of access into into that like through through one bot, right? You see like basically a backdoor through through their system, right? So instead of like a global Wi-Fi, you've got like a series of repeaters. Um, and your specialty being communications means that you can kind of set up like a, a, an ad hoc communication network. You're not able to do much, but you can kind of reach out to the fellows and at least uh, start tying together um, uh, communications between you internally, just for your crew. 
So, like, you all hear comms three come online. Uh, Join me, year. oh, unholy army of the night. Is that, is that, is that comms three? I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, comms three does, hasn't had a regular voice this whole time. Like, they've uh-huh. been cycling no, through. No, I, I, I just imagine it's just, like, like always just just snippets of, of like, some some little reference of, of some sort or another. And I'm just sort of making them up, because they can be anything. It's perfect. Right, but back. even so, much like my obscure references that I do in life, it depends on whether or not the receiver gets the snippet. Yeah, Comms 3 doesn't care. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I understand. I'm just trying to if express... If it is Comms 3, yeah. they pick an a, a awful time for a sense of humor. Right. I also thought that we didn't have... The ability for you've got. Um, I thought you've got um, some. Uh, well, I'm gonna say it this way: in the area around you, I thought maybe you had uh, like some level of like implant communicators. You didn't have like anything like HUD. No worries. I just wanted to check in because I remember us not doing communication. I, well, Andine gave me yeah. theirs before I went into the tunnel, mm-hmm. so I could see. Yeah, so that's because you don't have HUDs. But I don't know you, don't, if, you don't have any heads-up displays. You don't have yeah. any like your normal bits like that. But I believe mm-hmm. we had communications set up. And, okay. and if not, I'm gonna hand wave it because there would be like cool. some simple communications that okay. were working before things went down. I okay. remember it being internal. more a matter, of, and you know, at the risk of retconning, um, I remember it was not so much that we didn't have the ability to do it; it's that it wasn't working under those circumstances because yeah. okay. things were going haywire. And for mm-hmm. you also being re-sleeved, right? It was a new like element of like your your consciousness was sort of focused now, as opposed to being fully connected to the systems. And now you're finding ways to jack back into those systems. Right. Okay. That's how I'm seeing it. And this is and this is my my like preferred environment. Like I'm good in the chaos. In the, awesome. <laughs> Maybe, maybe. Uh, so I, I would say, you know, uh, Connor's not here, but like Penelope would would have like their their own heads up display that's kind of like coming from their arm, right? And basically says like, "Coms three is enjoyed, uh, invited you to join a chat room." <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Agree. <laughs> and it's called Unholy Army I feel like, of the I feel Night. Like she would pause. <laughs> right. <laughs> a heavy eye roll. Uh, but but like sits there and like does a little uh, um, a little quick programming to kind of like. Filter things appropriately. <laughs> it's gonna look okay. <laughs> but ultimately, is the eye roll emoji maybe? Yeah. But but I do want everyone to 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 see the the interface that I have made with the uh, with the other robots. Okay. Like, I. I is so any, that's what I'm just saying. Like, join. So the, by by seeing that interface, is there anything that we can glean from that? Like, is to there anywhere it would us be? Forward? Yeah. Like, in order to see it, like, is it being given to me? Like, are we seeing it on our monitors? Can I research what they did to try and replicate it with a robot? <laughs> Not while you're jammed inside of a heating element. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't have a visual right okay. now. Uh, cool. So, yeah, there's Fair. still no heads-up display. It's just an audio connection. But ha- have, I, have I managed to, to make all of the robots uh, stand down? Uh, that you have not been able, or have not done yet. Okay, right? like that's my that's try. my first order of business. Okay, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Is there a signal to let us know that there is a visual component so that we can connect to something that will give us those visuals? Is there something that indicates that, like a sound or a ping or anything like that? No, all this is just audio currently. Okay, like you think, uh, and Charlie Charlie knows that uh, should power come back up. Uh, you know, more things can be transmitted through different, like through the system, right? Visual things could come up, um, but right now it is on emergency lighting, emergency like panel. Like you are, as you found with the elevator, right? You're having to like open up doors manually as you're moving through. Like we're kind of skipping some of those pieces, right? Um, like most of them aren't that big of a deal yet, but so, so essentially, yeah, it's like no screens are up. Happening. So I'm just doing invisible things and saying really cryptic things in reference to them. Thinking that I'm that I'm sharing all the information. I'm assuming that I'm, yeah. I'm sharing all the information. Yeah. So ba- yeah, basically, what's happening is is you you recognize this like maybe after like trying to ping ping off them and recognize. Yeah, why them, are they right? not answering me? Right. Like you're doing like video calls and they're like, yeah, you know, <laughs> don't say anything. Can you see me? No. No. Come three. Would like to FaceTime with you. Oh God. God. <laughs> you're you're like hard no. <laughs> right? Hard no. Never. Because who knows what face. Tom three would do. We'll do that later. Um, so uh, what you recognize uh, is that 
the power for the system is still down, right? But the bots themselves have a uh, their own power cores, as you do, right? Like, and you see your you know your your bars slowly dropping. Like, you still have plenty of time, but it is definitely like you're running on internal power, and so like they have their own internal network that's supplying uh, like what you're bouncing off of. Right? Okay. Um, so, do I know how much time it, before I need to uh, desleeve? Uh, hmm. So there's no nothing that says you have to de-sleeve, but your body might run out of power, but might, unless it gets recharged. So I know that I'm safe if it powers down with me in it. Uh, yeah, there should be like you know. This this is my body now. Yeah, it should. <laughs> for for all practical like purposes, yeah, it's absolutely. my first body. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, birthday. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm picturing like a little like celebratory jingle somewhere. I was thinking of a birthday cake with a one in it. <laughs> Zero. Yeah, right. <laughs> Technically true, actually. Right? Yeah, yeah there you go. Robot. Um, so you have, uh, at this point, a little under an hour. Like, you regulate, like, basically, you had about an hour of power from the time that, like, things kind of click off. Power hour? Power hour. And I say, <clears throat> 59 minutes and 38 seconds to power down. Can you drain power from the other robots? No, oh, that's a good question. Wait, so what? Power so, vampire. So, what do I know about if the ship powers down completely? What happens? Uh, the entire ship? Yeah. Oh, that's 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 not gonna happen. That's bad. That would be we that would be game over. I would. I was, I'm just talking about me. Well, we'd eventually yeah, run out of air. My uh, right? my my body. And then everything Got it. would just eventually. Yeah, so we're talking about individual units. So, like, imagine Mark is a, bot- a battery pack, or Comsory is a battery pack right now, and that's where your network is bouncing off of is all of the different maintenance spots mm-hmm. that still have battery power for at least a, a temporary. Mode. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm like a remote remote controlled car. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so you were asking about uh, like shutting down, uh, shutting down the maintenance spots, which you were you're realizing that there's not uh, many in your area currently. I right? don't necessarily want to shut them down. I just mm-hmm. want to put them back on their normal. Standby kind of thing, or at least you know, uh, back to what they're doing. Or if I could, if yeah, if I could make them just act normally, like whatever they're like, if they're, but if they, if it's just like the cleaning thing, I would just turn that off for the time being. If that if that makes them stand down, that'll that does like ninety percent of what I need them to do right now. Uh, make another interface roll. Oh, this time I missed it by three. Ooh. Uh, so you you managed to uh, sort of set down a, like, uh, you know, because you're in the system, it's a little bit easier for you in some ways. You managed to uh, send the signal out that it's going to shut off, but it's kind of like uh, not a, a, a program break, right, but more of a, sure, once we finish the current cycle, right, which might be a few more minutes. Okay, so I have another, I, I have an idea for that. Okay. Um, as you, uh, as both you and Penelope are sort of like progressing on, so I'm going to kind of move around to, to other, other members, um, you do see, uh, what looks like a few, uh, like, I kind of think how these bots, uh, I'm going to call them puddles at this point of perhaps like some crew that might have been taken out by some of these bots. Ooh. Uh, is it good? <clears throat> Uh, it is it is very gooey, um, but what you do see is uh, their their cortical stacks. Uh, uh, so you find like two cortical stacks that uh, Penelope picks up, um, and it does appear that they are still like operational. Excellent. But there's definitely been uh, been body death. Ooh. Yeah, organic damage. Do they collect the goo? Uh, it looks a lot less goo than there would be if it was just a human body that was completely liquefied, but there's mm-hmm. definitely, like, a, it's a, like a, a stain left behind. I'm going to that way. Maybe like a most cleaning of the large bot chunks will come by. Right, well, that's the, the thing. Is, Zamb- I was just, the little Zamboni I, will right, drive through later. A, a goo Zamboni? I was just mm-hmm. curious, because you, if it is biological, you would think that it would be natural that they would want to put that back Oh, yeah, you would go. System. it would go into the food. Yeah, it, it, that's part of the... That's probably where the large chunks are going. <laughs> Guess what you're having for dinner? So yeah, they green. Sounds delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. It's all carbon. <laughs> also terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to Truth Seeker. So uh, mm-hmm. you are mashed behind like the sort of like heating vents, right? Right, like I around the little corner. You hear them go past, um, and then I would say like there are some tense minutes. Uh, uh, give me a favor and roll a roll a d6. Four. Cool. Uh, so imagine like um, 
you ever been, uh, you know, maybe, like, I'm imagining, like, you know, you're in the woods, right, and you hear a sound that just, like, you know, freaks you out. Like, you've got that moment of, like, adrenaline, mm -hmm. you know, how slowly time ticks by. Like, this is four minutes of just that hyper, like, your body is already, like, re-sleeping sickness, like, stressed out. You were just crawling at full speed through tunnels, kind of looking through a hand, like a heads-up display, hearing them come right behind you, you jam wedge yourself behind and they go by and you're just like, oh fuck, this is what it is to have a body again. Like you're freaking out. Um, this one just be alive. And so four minutes feels like 40, right? Like mm -hmm. it is just like, I don't want to move. You know that they might hear you. Um, but after four minutes, like that crackle from Con 3 kicks on. Mm -hmm. Okay. That kind of like brings me back to myself, and I'm like, okay, I should probably move before they start coming this way, or at least go check on Antine. And um, so I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna head out of the little part of the tunnel that I'm in and backtrack towards where Antine was. Cool. Um, so we were rolling, I believe, like a there was actually a survival or something along those lines. I was doing. Uh, what was the? Yeah, survival is one of the things. Cool. Right. I keep having overlap between this and D and D. It's hard to keep track of that. Uh, I realized recently how similar my th this character is to my D and D character, and I, and I'm having trouble. <laughs> yes, I'm having trouble. <laughs> We've got to like just write down some of those separate. I need a whiteboard for my role playing gaming now. Uh, do you do you want a whiteboard? No, no, no. I mean like a ho <laughs> at home, a big one to like map out what the fuck's going on with my character and red string, a bunch of red yarn. Yeah, and a bunch of yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so uh, so roll survival. What is your skill, by the way? Sixty. Sixty. Mm -hmm. um, cool. I'm gonna give you a plus ten because you've kind of you've already gone through these tunnels, but you're doing it in reverse, so it's like a little hard. But okay. uh, give me a little bonus on it. Fifty one. Bam, got it. Um, so, and you rolled like you rolled pretty well. So uh, you're doing it kind of kind of fast, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you managed to uh, in like I want to say half the time, like about the same amount of time. Like you're not uh, in this. I am running for my life level, but you're definitely still. I want to get out of these uh, this tunnel as fast as possible, kind of thing um, to try and you know get like to get yeah. back, and also I'm done being in a giant tunnel with. Uh, mechanical spiders. <laughs> yeah. As you do. Right? Yeah. You know, Trying a, to kill me. It's a, it's a You've thing. reached your s mechanical spider threshold. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're yeah. done. Um, so, uh, yeah, you hear, uh, I would say, comms three kind of like pipe through that, you know, they're they're on a cleaning cycle and we'll, you know, we'll shut down in, you know, X amount of minutes, but that doesn't necessarily make you feel terribly thrilled. Like you can still hear echo echoing through the uh, the air ducts, right? That they're like you hear things crawling around in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Is it like click 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 kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Well, when I hear Com three say that, I'm gonna just say back to them. Um, does that mean all the robots will shut down in that time? They'll go. Uh, I'm, well, I'm back to you. Like, uh, what do you say about that? Say it again. Uh, would all the robots shut down in that time? You're giving us a time limit of when you run out cycle. of power, right? I was just asking if that's like all the, the cleaning clean. cycle mm -hmm. will cease. That one. All cleaning will cease at that time. Still working on it. Yes. Okay, so it's not yeah. related to them shutting down. No, definitely. Okay. Um, so you make it back to the room, um, and I'd say like. Mm, yeah, they real, 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 pretty well. Um, you have stealth. I think there's some version of stealth in here. What is it called? Uh, isn't that kinesthetics or something like that? Might even infiltrate. be athletics. Infiltrate. infiltrate. It would be infiltrate. There it is. Yeah, infiltrate. We'll try it. Uh, so roll me your infiltrate. Uh, I have a 45. Cool. I rolled a 14. Cool. Uh, oh, yeah. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. Seated. And we're all finishing something over here. There it is. Oh, nice. Um, cool. So you see, uh, or you hear uh, Andine uh, just kind of like, True Seeker, is that you? Like, you know, it just like hears you come out of there. Like, you're, you're quiet, but they, they heard you, right? Yeah. Like, you know, and you don't sound like clickies. Right. <laughs> and I whisper back, it's me. I think I lost them. How is it going here? Have you heard from Charlie? Oh, oh and Andine stands up like, no, I've been hiding. <laughs> I mean, we're supposed to be watching the screens. The power's out right now. I'm hoping oh, yeah. the power comes back on. 
Um, I'm going to say Andine is not actually part of... Uh, no. Uh, now that you're in the room, okay, and Andine's part of the loop, like the loop, like kind of keyed in. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, okay, so you hear Andine also get join part of the group, right? Um, part of the line. Uh, and it's just like, I need, we need power back up in order to get, like, data on these astrometrics in order to tell the pilot, uh, you know, Charlie, like, the bridge, how to go, right? We need to get this information soon. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you've been doing this this whole time. Hi, totally. Hi. Everybody's like, why haven't you, have we been able to hear you for a while? I'm sure you got it. It's picking up ambient sounds. And now we're better. Hey, everybody. You hear my voice now? Welcome back to Travis Transfer. Sorry. No, that's, I, I didn't even realize... I'm loud. I project. Um, you didn't hit it yet. That's how you you would right, know. Yeah, it. that's how I would know. Is I really should just be like, wow, I have so much range of motion. Something's wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so now, now we've said that. A little bit closer. Uh, cool. Uh, so here's the thing. Uh, you know that there is at least several minutes for these things that they might be able to come back in. Um, are you guys doing anything to try and prevent that? Um, is there any way for us to, like, block the entrance to the service tunnel? Uh, you, I mean, do you notice a, uh, a door, uh, right, like a hatch that you could crank shut? It might take you a little bit. Okay, I crank it shut. Cool. Uh, what's your athletics? 45. Cool. Um, so Andine actually kind of comes over to join you, so, uh, roll me that athletics on it, because it's, it's kind of up at an operating, it's designed for, like, the robots to operate, right? No? 58. Uh, and what's your athletics? 45. Cool. Uh, so, <laughs> Tis a fail. Andine is on the other side cranking it, so like that, that half is kind of like starting to shut, yours is not <laughs> doing anything, and Andine's just looking at you, um, and you do hear some clicking getting louder uh, in, in like the vents. So you're basically like starting to shut the vents, but it's still open for now. Um, we're going to pop over to Caster and, uh, and Charlie. Like a, I don't know, sitcom we're working on. Can do. Yeah. Pastor and Charlie. Yeah. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Charles not in charge. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is where we've like lost half the viewers. Like, yeah, no, it's, you know, it's a terrible no, show. Click. <laughs> if they even get it at all. Exactly. Yeah. That is exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> well, then the Wampin's viewers. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh I haven't watched that show in forever. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, you, you're making it through like multiple, multiple different bulkheads, right? There's a couple different, um, like multiple times you've had to open up doors, and this kind of same process that you've had to go through. For, for We're heading towards the bridge, correct? Mm-hmm. You're heading yeah. towards the bridge. You're getting pretty close. Um, I would say, uh, similarly to to what uh, I already described for for Penelope and Comps Three, like you run into a couple of human um, smears that have been left over at this point. Um, but there are still like intact, uh, uh, like cortical stacks. I definitely pocket the stacks. Stacks, stacks, stacks. Yeah. Never, never leave home without your stacks. <laughs> stacks I got and snacks. Stacks and snacks. Mm. Oh. That's the t-shirt of the day. I, I pull out a, a a pair of dog tags, and I was like, uh, it's it, Raja. Yeah, but it's pretty archaic. Who yeah. wears dog tags anymore? It's all in your stack. No, I know, but you know, his, his an interesting thing about his family, and uh, and I, I kind of go off on like this particular guy's like mm-hmm. history and his family, um, and I keep kind of like maybe stuttering a little bit, and um, and and I seem really nervous about talking about this guy's family to you for whatever reason. Yeah, you know, it's, and so like, really, what he where, where he sort of left off is is that he. So his his whole family. I can't even. Uh, never mind. We should just continue on. I I just no, never mind. Just forget about what I'm saying at all. I I can't I can't really even think about. I hand him the stack for that one, and I say, "You hold on to this one." Yeah, no, we're I'll, gonna keep walking. No, it's that's a great idea. No, I'll I'll hang on to the stack. Uh, you do see uh, part of the uh, the smears though. There is a uh, a very large uh, like wrench, like a spanner, right? That that's there. Um, also, like it just kind of like. Covered in a little, little blood. Oh, I, I'll definitely take that and, um, yeah, I'll clean that half. <laughs> yeah, I'll just kind of. Charlie's very I utilitarian. Do, I wipe it, yeah. I, yeah. I just wipe it on my, my like, heavy Carhartt esque pants. Yeah, we're, you're in emergency mode. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and so that's, uh, convenient because it looks like, um, uh, actually, so, uh, what did you say that their name was with the, the dog tags? I'm just going to go with what you said. 
Oh, Raja. 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 Um, so it does look like Raja actually was uh, at uh, one of the like the bulkheads and to enter into the bridge, mm-hmm. um, and maybe that's why they had this uh, uh, this wrench because there is uh, this is a different access port, right? Then it the bridge is designed to be a little more secure, uh, and so it does look like you're going to have to crank at it to get it to get it to open. Um, and conveniently, you have a wrench now that's going to help you all out. Well, I do have a wrench, mm-hmm. but. Is there any way that I can now say so? There's there's still power in the ship. It's just like very low emergency pieces. Yeah. So can like, I reroute a power source to just uh, like like just to give this particular um, uh, doorway um, more power for we're talking like five to ten seconds to help us crank it? Ooh, yeah. Are you an engineer? I like that. I'm the pilot. It's um, not the same thing. It's kind of adjacent, you know? <laughs> it's engineering adjacent. I, I, Depends on I how like good that. of a pilot he um, is. I would so say, uh, <laughs> looking, at, looking at your skills, skills. here, uh-huh. um, uh, a hardware aerospace uh, role oh, yeah. would do That's it for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got 65 in that, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, five. Nice. nice. So I did succeed. Yeah, it is not fast. Uh, so uh, I would say, uh, you know, it... You kind of work it. There's a panel next to the door, right, um, where uh, basically there's there's some emergency lighting that yeah. you kind of see, like you you break it apart and you're like pulling out some wiring. Um, you're opening up like the door panel there, and you're kind of like connecting pieces. Um, and you know it's going to take you a few minutes, but to kind of like do a little bypass, uh, but you should be able to get some power to the door. Yeah. Uh, and you know during All right. this time, you're just like time three, to chat basically. Three, two, one. I'm just I'm just like you know like while you're doing that, I would say you're. You're handling the, uh, the the door wedging or whatever with the uh, uh, or the wrench at this point. So, what's your athletics? Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> my athletics is a whopping thirty. Hey, um, I'm gonna give you a plus twenty on it because uh, uh, actually plus thirty because this is a really good idea. That's the next one for being able to adjust something. So, oh, okay. uh, based on the circumstances and the fact that you're getting like a pretty heavy assist on this. So, okay. We only get two tries. So. Uh, what is that, 65? Uh, 65, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I know. So, no, it, it, it creaks a little bit, um, but it looks like you can get, like, one more more try, like, with, with the assist on can it. Can I, uh, go over now that I've rerouted it, can I go over and, and, and crank with Caster? Like, uh, isn't that what we were doing? Uh, well, th- this was, like, you know, kind of like, go for it! <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, because uh-huh. there's that initial kind of charge. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'd say, like, you'd be able to go over um, and sort of, like, add, add some additional leverage to it. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm going to say it's assisted. I'll give you another 10 for, like, a, an additional assist. So who's got better, actually, athletics? Oh, uh, well, It'd I don't know what you're Probably doing. 45. What do you got? And well, mine's 30. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm going to so say... 45, you, 75, plus 10 is 85. Yeah, so this is looking look good, better for you. 61. <sighs> Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, that, so then at that point, we both are like kind of putting all our body weight into it and yeah. crank. And yeah. at, as you do that, like it just sparks. The light the light goes out, um, and including like into the next hall, you can kind of see like some illuminated red kind of like pulsing. Um, but like the immediate like 20, 30 feet, right? It's, it's darker now, but you're like, okay, we're in. And 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 it's completely dark. Mm-hmm. And just suddenly like a, a, a little um, personal light just comes on and, and it just illuminates this like big old shit eating grin like yeah we did it we 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 did it like you and you and me caster is unfazed <laughs> wait where are you going caster i was celebrating our vic okay i'm coming like it's not that caster is like upset they like literally don't really know what is happening with that sleeve right now. Like, what is that reaction? It, I don't... What is... <laughs> what is joy? What is... <laughs> it's like we make a good team or something. I, I, I don't handle that. chipper. <laughs> I don't handle chipper. I like that. Not, at least not that kind. <laughs> Just um, the one kind. I remember right. Oh yeah, yeah. We talked about this last time. The, the one I keep thinking is like kinetics is not as kinesics. Um, is like body language stuff. It's like can no. right? So uh, uh, cast your oh. roll. Yeah, roll whatever your kinesics is, which is like based on savvy. It's fifteen. Oh great. <laughs> that is exactly what I'd expect it to be, but I still want you to roll it. Yeah, absolutely. 
<laughs> 22. Oh, pretty damn close. It's pretty damn close. Pretty damn close. Pretty good enough. Uh, Twinkles only counts yeah. on hand grenades. Uh, yeah. Shoot hand grenades. Yeah. Right. You, um, you probably think I'm yelling at, out of anger or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah. I actually, so over the years, I would imagine that it, it's less of like, um, like I, Caster is thinking it's something else. It's more like a Caster is like, that's not information I need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like moving on to the next thing. <laughs> so, some level of like, you just kind of file, file it away of like, I, uh, I remember hearing that uh, humans normally act strange in stressful situations. <laughs> <laughs> like, hmm. uh, so right you uh, you start entering uh, entering into the bridge, and a couple like little little lights start like turning on for panels. Okay, what is switch off you here? Uh, remind me, like what? So what is our goal on the bridge? Uh, you are what going are to, to be uh, laying in the course correction, basically like man- managing the firing of the thrusters, um, doing piloty things uh, to get us on the new path in towards the sun. You're turning the fucking ship. Yeah, I, that's my strength. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what, uh, before we switch off you, what, what you notice is like, you know, some of the panels start coming on. Um, it is obviously like very low power level. So it's, it's not like you would be used to having all of the, pa- like everything light up, everything like, you yeah. know, going three dimensional displays, like popping up. Um, but you go over and see, uh, one of the screens is kind of blinking red. Um, that's which, not good. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, where you would normally go into basically, um, uh, there's, Imagine all of the matrix. There's kind of like chairs you go, and it's not quite like the jabbing a spike into the back of your head kind of level, but it is like here is a, a seat where you're going to be. It's aggressive. Yeah, exactly. Like it's a seat where you and like a co pilot, um, or rather you, like you, the pilot, kind of sit in. There's like a mini virtual uh, space. Um, I'm going to call it like a semi virtual space. <laughs> hey. Um, a semi virtual space me? where you would, uh, <laughs> you know, manage all of the incoming information from the ship and be able to like pilot it at, at a higher speed, right? Yeah. Um, that system was down, uh, and so you know you need a co-pilot, and you're going to have to do things a little more manually. Great teamwork. I've got space piloting. Yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Perfect. I think that's why you came here to begin. I, with I remember, agree. Right? Yeah. Something my great grandfather used to say. He say. High fives save lives. You know what high? Do you know what a high? F- okay, we'll just focus on the job. No, Great. S- switching off you <laughs> back to comms three and Penelope. Uh, so you you head down and you you remember like the part of the ship that you passed by earlier, um, uh, like during the tour, right? Uh, you get on into the deck, the engineering deck, where you got the the core and uh, the data core as well as the fusion core. Um, and at this point, like Penelope kind of peels off, right, and heads off toward the data core. Right. Um, but you know, we're still in maintaining communication. Um, but you kind of like progress forward and make it up to the um, like the entrance to the fusion core, like the shielded door to it. Um, and there are uh, two humans standing out front, um, and they they kind of like look at you and kind of like take their guard, right? Like you're gonna attack them. Looks like. Uh, 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 and they're holding. They're holding like also to sort of span wrenches, like they're like ready to kind of like try and bash you. I put up like two of my legs up, you know, like like no, I, uh, come three here, come three. Uh, I'm I'm here to help. <laughs> well, I mean that's new for them. Um, so so one one kind of looks over um, at the other. So they both they look pretty they look pretty battered. Um, like they fought off a couple of those, but they have like su- like successful. Like they're not missing any limbs. <laughs> Really bad. <laughs> well, thankfully, no, no, no. Actually, I got a fifty-fifty chance to persuade them. Uh, roll a roll a thing. We'll see how they feel. Like right now, they're just they're they're on adrenaline. That's what. Okay, it looks like. okay. So if they look at me funny, I do a little dance. So like, kind of just like. Dance. It might look aggressive. You're a robot. Well, I'm sorry. I'm working it out. I, wait, I don't have. Wait, it. no. Have you ever seen Ghost in the Shell? They got the touchy comas, and sometimes they do a little dance. It's like that's that. what I was thinking of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in this particular event, though. Very bad. I got a ninety trying to catch fifty. Uh, so I I freak them the fuck out. Yeah, oh. you actually you do, and they they, they actually cornered. move move in to kind of like you know bash you while like one one kind of stays back. Um, and it's he's going in and rolling some melee on you actually. Oh, oh no! Smash the spider. This is not how you do a little dance and make a little love. Yeah, I mean, if you're, but I may get down, down tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, um, uh, I think we're doing what, fray, it's been a minute, Me- yeah, melee, it counters melee, um, or you could do, like, half your fray, but that's, 
I'm gonna get so melee. half my fray or what? Melee, melee counters melee. Oh, okay. What's uh, what's your melee? Um, my melee is forty. Cool. So that was my fray though, so it's kind of cool. Six one half dozen the other. So yep, is rolling at you. Misses though, so you don't even have to worry about it. Okay. Dodge is out of the way deftly, um, but the other one. Um, I like to sing uh, about the Muna and the Juna and the Springer. I like to sing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which I think a robot spider doing would be Ooh. really, really funny. Uh, so the other one that kind of stayed behind and was kind of like, you know, like letting the other kind of run up and like bash. And it looks like they've, um, that one took uh, more of a defensive stance. And as the, the, the first one came in to kind of swing, they start backing up. And the other one was kind of moving in to hit you as well. Like they, they've learned this sort of like tandem attack level, right? Like to kind of, uh, you know, play around with those those bots and like you know never put one of them like toe to toe with a bot before right so you see like what feels to you like a, a bit of a tactic but that second one goes to move up um and actually stops um and and grabs the shoulder of the other one and uh make sure i got the name got, got my names right um and it just says like uh alloy i i don't think we've never heard one talk to us before <laughs> so hold on uh State your business. What what is your idea? What, what is your identification code? Um, I rattle off a, a long digital code. Okay, um, and he's sitting there, but like, put up a, a, a quick uh, hand piece. Like, uh, looks over at Alloy. Like, say, says that this one is a uh, is actually being used as a sleeve for. I've never seen that designation before, but consciousness. Who are you? I am Coms Three. Comms two, comms one, and I start. And I, then I start uh, rattling off the list of, of AIs, the small like sub AIs that that well, make up my. Currently, I am these things. <laughs> they're not and, and, sub and then, anymore. And then it's there's like, a, and then there's a chime. Have you been experiencing latency? <laughs> and then the, and then so the like displaying like the the the, the PSA I. Yes, and the PSA. PSA, I, I love that, by the way. I'm, I'm holding on to that one. Yeah. <laughs> Trademark. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and so I'm, I'm trying in, in my own elliptical way to, to, uh, um, to present myself. I imagine their faces mm -hmm. are the kind of annoyance, like when uh, C-3PO starts to list off all the languages that he speaks. Han Solo is just like, eh. <laughs> I think that this is probably also a lot like the movie Short Circuit. Yeah. Comms <laughs> 3 is alive! Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'll even fire that one out. Comms 3 is alive! Oh my god, this is great. Sorry, uh, you, you hit a nerve there. 90s kids won't get it. Or a circuit, <laughs> maybe? See? Maybe. Mm. Sorry. Um, so it was, okay, it was so okay. called in out. the Pacific you can, you Northwest. Can... <laughs> we should watch it later. So it's All like right, 1984. No. It's, I can't it, wait it's, to be those old it's people. It's ridiculously old. Watching Short Circuit with people? Or? No, 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 from Short Circuit. Yeah. We'll talk later. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of batteries not included. Oh. Ah, yeah. That's great. Also, Damn you, I was thinking of Cocoon. Carry on. <laughs> all mashup. Right, yeah. We, the, we get super nerdy. What I really love is that they all correlate in some way to our adventure. <laughs> Robots to batteries not included to Cocoon. <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. You know, 100%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God damn it, this is getting weirder. I love it. Um, <laughs> shucks, right? Always sound to get uh, with you. So, so the one, uh, you know, Alloy, the one that, you know, the other guy, like, you know, put arm off to, and kind of, like, while you're rattling things off, kind of just, like, they do that eye roll. Um, and, it, it, like, there, there's a level of relief. Uh, like, okay, we don't, this one's not going to attack us, right? Um, but then there's also a level where Alloy turns the other one. Oh, um, they also said state your business. And, and I say, I'm here to, I'm here to, uh, restore the core. Um, but uh, but Alloy looks at Cater uh, right before, like before, you, like while you're rattling things off before you get to that piece, right? Um, he goes, Cater, I, I think this is the one that they, they briefed us on, right? Like that anomaly. I'm gonna call you for uh, now. They've been briefed. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. There's only so there's only so many humans. I like how you reacted to the they've been briefed and not the. It's an anomaly. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, they've been briefed. Well, I already know I'm an anomaly. Oh, okay. Great. I, you just don't take it personally. Excuse me, I am the anomaly. So they hear you say that you're, you're here to do what? Restore the core. Re uh, restore order. Uh, 
power is out on decks three, five, seven, nine, okay, okay, yeah, 12, we, we 14, basic, 24. Basically all of them. Um, it, we, we like they they rattle off like we understand like emergency like procedure three like this is we are at a, a low level all of the energy is going towards right now trying to just maintain life support and the data stack right that is that is, that is primary um, we need to figure out a way to to like vent some of this heat that's been building up which is starting to uh, affect the efficiency of the drive and we need more fuel but I, I hear that maybe we are. Uh, you know, gonna correct that soon. We're making a flyby of the sun that's shooting at us. Yes, that is Not the there, stated yes. goal. Okay, uh, so there, so there's a problem. Um, we uh, the the core is at this point uh, putting off an excessive amount of radiation, um, and like it takes two to to get in there and to try and like. Uh, at least immediately vent uh, vent some of the heat, and then I don't know if you have any skills working with um, fusion reactors, uh, but maybe making it I don't know finding a way to to like route the power appropriately because right now it's it's kind of stuck in an emergency shutdown mode, and we need energy to fly the ship. I have seen the simulation. I watched videos. It's, it's kind of it's, it's kind of like the, the the lieutenant in charge of the the operation in Aliens, is where they're, they're like, "So how many uh, how many drops have you have you made?" It's like uh, forty two simulated, and it's like, how, "Well, how many real ones? Uh, two, including this one." <laughs> yeah. Damn it! Yeah, yeah. And that's, you can, you can see I'm him at. literally getting I, sick on the way down. He's yeah. Like, so that so yeah, I, I'm so I'm even worse than that. I've never actually done this. Um, but I, th I may be able to enlist the help of other bots. Uh, ideally that'd be great. Or like if, if we go in there, it might mean or like possibly even real death for us. The, the level of radiation could fry a stack potentially, yes. but it's, it's also going to affect your systems. You are very fragile. Meat suits. <laughs> Meat suits. <laughs> Accurate. Um, do you have any bots on you? Because I don't see any other bots. And the last I am in saw, contact with all the bots. Do you have control over the bots? I am working on that. <laughs> we, we're, we're excited about this plan. This plan sounds great. Um, so you you notice that like Alloy is is kind of like still standing in front of, of of the other like Cater a little bit and kind of like just like a little shoulder and kind of has a hand and back just like protectively. Um, but like I don't know if we we have enough time. Uh, in order to get another bot here, because we need to we need to get in there now. So I would say like I can multitask. So we're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go in and see if you can pull a bot. If you get can't get one here within a, a few minutes, like one of us isn't gonna need to go in. Okay. Let's try it. Cool. <laughs> so uh roll me another interface. What's your interface value right now, by the way? 80. 80. And I got a 42. Oh. I would say uh, so you answered everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Ooh, like the universe, everything, but not the question. Um, Just the answer. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna say that uh, you, you locate a bot uh, that is uh, nearby, and um, I would say like not necessarily heading this way, but you recognize that it's on sort of the cleaning loop. Uh, but with that 42, you basically reroute it. Like, you you don't stop what it's doing necessarily, but you basically go, like, come here, need you, right? And you realize you've kind of looped control over it. Um, and so it, it ambles up here in just a couple minutes. So we'll say that. So, so I say, I, I give the, the ETA, you know, bot will arrive in T minus three minutes, 42 seconds. And then shall we... Get started. Uh, so uh, so let's see. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, so they they start getting like uh, dressed into like radiation suits, like you know, fast as possible. Um, and like they go into the room with you. Um, but they're like, we we can only be here so long. It is going to like you know take us say, out of the case. And I say, where is my radiation suit? Uh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! Gotcha. Um, all right, so you head into a uh, an airlock kind of system, uh, and you know more like shielding than anything yeah. else. Right? There's no pressure changes, um, and the door opens. And let me see what you've got. What's your sheet? So you can familiarize with all of the. I don't have the the this is I don't have the. I'm just looking for the list of things to see what you got. Oh yeah yeah. 
just to see what might be appropriate for this. Yeah. You um, have the bot, the the bot uh, attributes. Bot uh, attributes. Bot attributes. Oh, oh, I got oh. bot attributes. All right. Bot bot attributes. Um, Santa, my bot attributes all up in your piece. Cool. So, um, roll, 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 roll me a um, <laughs> Robo Booty. Yes. Roll me a somatics check. So, three times your somatics go. Uh, <laughs> call it Terra twerking. No. no. Nope. <laughs> 53, nope. and I had a 15. Cool. Okay, so. <clears throat> There's some are somatics only five? Yeah. I don't have I haven't had a body until now. Okay, that's fair. But I was like, damn. <laughs> mine's, mine's ten, but uh so you take eight physical damage. Um as Is that's that's stress? Uh no, I mean it, it damage. is damage. Yeah, it is actual damage. And my it's wound not. threshold is eleven. Okay, so it doesn't wound you. This is just Wait, like the mental the stuff, right? You have to hit that. There. You're taking damage, but if you go, if you hit that threshold, then it, it like starts doing some severe damage to you. Um, but what this means right now is that you're going to have to uh, basically be doing these checks consistently. And what what's happening, what that represents, is that you um, your uh, your optical circuits, you start seeing like. Uh, Lens flares. Yeah, honestly, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're you're seeing you're seeing lens flares, but really, it's more like sparks everywhere. Um, as have you ever seen um, uh, footage from like the, the the solar probes and things like that that we look at the sun, right? So when cosmic rays hit and they trigger the uh, uh, the like the parts of the CC chip, right, the pixels. So you're seeing like as tons of exotic uh, you know particles and radiation is just flooding your system. And what this is doing is like you're getting bits of like discharge across circuits and you're you're managing it now, um, but you recognize it very quickly. It's gonna start degrading you and you have a very limited amount of time to uh, to be functional in here before it just like breaks down the system. Um, you are also concerned, um, uh, yeah, with your interface, you just, I'll give this to you. Um, you are also concerned that uh, it, under long enough uh, time, you recognize that it could start degrading your like your drive, and that you, who you are could be threatened by it, right? In the same way that their cortical stacks could be a problem. Compromised. So, but you are better shielded. But I'm in danger. <laughs> 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 uh, so you you hear uh, like whirring and clicking as a maintenance bot kind of uh, kind of rolls in. Uh, there is a like a, a hatch its own sort of system like as it, as it rolls through the wall. Um, and uh, you see that it shows up and you know and kind of like shows up at your feet, right? And is like you know waiting for waiting for response. Like you know uh, you know a uh, command. Meanwhile, like Alloy and uh, and Cater are kind of like you know working on a couple panels, like trying to trying to work work things out. Um, so what what is my current task physically? Uh, you you need to basically be doing some physical physical tasks around the room to vent some of the heat uh, to uh, which is just building up right the radiation and the heat is is relevant. You need to um, like. Uh, basically, open because power is shut down enough to uh, to stop the normal cooling system. So I'm like I'm like uh, I'm activating venting systems manually. Yeah. Then there are there are a number of them, and they are roughly the same. Yeah. I can I set it up so that the bot basically just does with one what I do with the other. Uh, yes, so you sort of like mirroring yourself, is what yeah. you're saying, right? So it definitely starts to do that. Um, what you notice, though, is that it looks like it is degrading even faster than you. And you see, like, Alloy and, uh, and Cater kind of, like, noticing that and talking to each other. And, like, we're going to kind of cut there for now as you start, start working on the things you need. We're to. in danger. You're in danger, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so I'm going to cut to Penelope, um, just as, as a more narrative piece because Connor's not here. Um, so Penelope shows up to the, the data core, which is also like that, instead of that ethereal sort of bluish color you expect the, the, the cores to be, right? It is red, it's having issues. Um, and they spend some time, and they're kind of filling you all in on this, um, but they spend some time analyzing the core, and they're like checking in like, hey, um, I don't want to make this decision uh, on, uh, on behalf of everybody, but I think I can free up some, uh, at the very least, processing power, and that should, and and therefore some um, uh, actual like 
power uh, for the ship if we adjust some of the parameters of the hold. Um, for instance, like crank down the relative time for it. So right now it's running on a one-to-one, -one, as in one second here is one second in the virtual. Um, but if we crank that down to where time is travel or significantly slower in the hold, that could free up processing power and therefore like actual power. Mm, not I've... not a lot, but enough. Maybe to help with some of the systems we need. Thoughts? I don't want to Am... make this decision for everybody. Am I wrong? Is there any reason for the hold to be up and running? So to speak, well, in this if we shut it down, there could be data loss. But if, if sure, we, not not like shutting it down completely, but I'm just saying like slowing crank it, it down. way down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's mm -hmm. the same way that we rerouted the power to the door. Mm -hmm. Like in this moment, when we really like need that power, can we reroute it to us and or like just? I'm just saying that there. I'm for it. I just, if we need more, I don't see oh. why we couldn't do a little bit more. I'm already working on the PSA. Right. I'm down. No. <laughs> you may lo notice lag. <laughs> um, so Penelope says, it, in theory, it shouldn't harm anything, um, mm -hmm. but it may be difficult to, because I, I don't know how the system is responding with the, the overload of consciousnesses in it anyway. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it may be difficult to speed it back up at some point. You also may experience um, consciousness disruption Spatial. as well due yeah. to the, the change yeah. in, in their know, environment. It, it could be um, damaging perhaps to, you know, yes. to those inside or, you know, psychologically at the very mm -hmm. least. Correct. Um, and yes, I also could potentially delete people from here if you wanted me to, but... I mean, do you really feel comfortable making that call? I feel like it was something we should have just all done together. No. Made it I, like a lottery type thing. I mean, Connor might feel comfortable making that call. <laughs> <laughs> I, on, I on this level she of... She was down to go with me. On, on this level of programming, it would be uh, an indiscriminate uh, deletion. So and I, I, I think I would not oh. be able to choose choose individuals. I would, it would be sort of a you know like I I can't pull up a folder right now and say like I'm going to delete this person that person. In that the, person. So right. I do know that we gave out a PSA. Has anybody volunteered to be deleted? I thought we agreed not to do that because all the good people would have volunteered to do that. <laughs> We'd be stuck with all the people. Oh, did who we? Were, like, really yeah. yeah. Oh. And I wouldn't have agreed to that. <laughs> and, and, and you wait for volunteers and those people get to live. <laughs> And, and, I, else dies. and I took kind of a kind of a legalistic point of view about it that that um, like the ones who stowed on board the ship don't they they have disrupted the balance mm -hmm. and and uh, they could have like you know they they played their part in the whole decision humanity yeah. played the whole part they right? could have sunk the hold right. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. and so so they had they have no right to be here. I'm on that board too, hypocritically, but I am. <laughs> Most of me has the right to be here. You're talking about the consciousnesses that were uploaded that uploaded themselves. That, that, yeah, yeah that, that's that, what that, I'm that saying. That are causing the the, no, no, no. the, the, the I get that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and there is, is a there is a part of me that feels like the everybody who was elected to be here shouldn't have to make that choice. Right. No. Okay. Yeah. Does that include? Um, the consciousness pool that was uploaded to our ship when Earth bit us. Yes, bit that's, that's what we're talking about. about. That is what yeah. you're talking about. So that, okay. that is the, the everybody, everybody who's supposed to be on the ship was on the ship when it left Earth orbit. Got it. Yeah, right. it, like all this. But conditions changed. But yeah. then, then we got, we got boarded. I am a. I mean, as a as a GM, I am willing to support all of you if you choose to off the vast majority of the remainder of, of humanity. Mega kill! Uh, <laughs> I will tell you there will be consequences, and yeah. it most likely will not go the way that you think you want it to. But if that's the way you want you to go, I'm not going to stop you. This is sandbox. You don't know the way I think it's going to go. I don't think this is the moment to make go. that decision. I think we should I just agree. Well, power. you said you, said you meanwhile, can't. Meanwhile, you, Penelope's over here like... But, but, but you said you can't do it. Uh, Penelope uh, responds like, well, I can't pull out individuals and say this is the case, but there is definitely a distinct, like, crew versus not crew 
identifications. Like I could try and yeah. wipe everybody who showed up afterwards. But that uh, you all remember the, the the data reel that came through of like all of Earth's children that there, came through were part of that group, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of heavy choices. And Penelope's like, I don't know, necessarily know if I feel comfortable being the one hitting the enter button. You definitely, especially do. when this it's this is a, oh, this should only be the last the last ditch effort. Yeah, that's I like agree. a last resort decision. I mean, especially if it's going to be indiscriminate. Mm-hmm. So I'd say that. Uh, um, Penelope goes like I can I can set up a um, a program to run through like if we, if we really need to 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 try and just wipe it but that's I really hope this is a break glass in case can you see. can you um, how are we all talking right now through comms. the in, comms three set up that internal comm system again okay got it uh, how uh, can you um, you can see Penelope by the way since you both have like you know visual displays, although Penelope is saying the same sort of like fuzz that's coming through your, your system. Right. Um, it's radiation, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> is it essentially like, can we like shelve certain, like, like are, are we talking about processing power storage space Both. right now? Uh, right, right now we're talking right now. about like yeah, really, what if, like processing power storage space, which is then also going to free up like the amount of power going to it. But Penelope's like, you know, meanwhile you hear like clacking in the background. Penelope's like, I'm I'm already slowing it down. That seems to be the case, and I'll read this back door in. But that's where you know, kind of want to end with Penelope for the moment. Okay. Um, so we're going to take a break here shortly-ish, but I want to I want to kick back over to to Ashley and okay. um, and then probably take a break. We'll come back in on the bridge, um, but. Um, uh, or we'll come back to you in the bridge. Okay. Uh, so, you after this like this conversation, you hear Penelope going like, "Okay, like I'm I'm shutting it down, like I'm dialing it back, uh, you know, by a pretty large factor." Um, and you and Dian starts like mentioning that it looks like power is starting to be rerouted to various places, right? Like okay. so, some power is coming back. It's still bad. Um, I'm not sure if we have enough necessarily to uh, uh, do a whole lot, but at least, you know, sensors are coming back up, um, starting to get some information. Okay. Um, and so, like, Andine asks you to kind of, like, go monitor um, a couple of the different, like, uh, posts okay. um, and, like, and feed, and feed her information. If everybody is kind of, like, rerouting power, is there a way for me to, like, reroute some of the power in the room to the screens? Like, if some, like, systems are coming back online? Uh, yeah. No, I have an electronic dynamic. skill. Yeah, go for it. It's a 60. That's my only hardware skill. <laughs> yeah. I would imagine most of 29. us only have Ooh. one. Ooh. Yeah. Um, it's not particularly fast, but you do it. Uh, yeah, you've got like kind of similar to, like, you know, there's a little better power happening now than you're know, just dragging, like, uh, I just want to make sure we see when we're supposed to turn or whatever we're doing. <laughs> that's, no, that is, that is <laughs> very important. That's what we're doing, right? We're, we're like, Telling them when to turn or what. To that is that is very much the idea. So so what what you manage to do with that actually is is you you get um, a simplified version of the hollow display. Right? Remember the room is sort of a three D hollow display, right? Right. Um, coming up at the very center. So you've got a, a visual of the sun and sort of like some some pullback of the solar system and like the path now. So you can see like um, uh, like astrometric astrometric data starting to come in in terms of paths. You can see uh, the like the direction of the flare at this point, and you've got right. enough data kind of uh, peeling off on that. Hmm. Um, but you notice uh, a really strange uh, like image on the sun, right? Like you know that you're, you're seeing this overlaid satellite imagery from like our various like uh, helioscopic observatory satellites that are watching the sun. Okay, we're still getting data from. Um, but you notice like this strange uh, like pattern on the surface of the sun. Is there a way for me to like capture an image of it or something so I can like show other people? Screenshot. Yeah, yeah you, like can I screenshot it a few times? <laughs> easily. Yeah. No, I, I'd say like you kind of like blow it up a little bit. Um, and, um, I don't know, like, show and die and she's in the room. And also a solar physicist. Yeah. Well, I, I assume they were still closing the door, so I'll call them over and be like, what, what is this? Do you have any idea? I've never, I've never, I mean, I don't know much about the sun, but I've never, I don't think that's supposed to be there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then actually, like, drops what they're doing and comes over to you in that in that way of like somebody who's passionate about what they do. Yeah. Um, and you see them actually pull out their 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 display and like take some photos. Um, you know, or or you know, 
capture the data. It's not quite like they're selfieing with it, right? But so like, hey, um, to which <laughs> Instagram to which you start seeing some of that data come across the network now, right? Is like it's kind of feeding back into mm. like, things are starting to wake up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So Andine starts explaining that this uh, what you're seeing is like this this pattern is the surface of the sun is darker, right, in this area. So um, normally, like the uh, image that I sent out to uh, our Travis Transfer Facebook group. Sorry, people who are listening, you'll get to see our cool conversations and memes. Um, but uh, you know that that convection pattern on the surface of the sun, right? The boiling, you can see that um, there's light and dark spots, right? The lighter spots are like where it's hottest, right? And there's some cool regions, and everything is constantly in motion. But you see this region that is actually taking up what looks like a like if this is the surface of the sun, it's something like. It's sized. It is large. Okay. Jeez. Um, yeah, it's not. That is not normal. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a solar tumor. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so, and that explains like this looks like a sunspot, which is uh, where the magnetic field of the sun uh, emerges, um, sort of breaks free of the surface, and in that process suppresses the heat, which makes it cooler looking. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's it's dark. It's darker compared to the hot part of the rest of the sun, but it's still very hot. Right. It's right. not being right. released. Yeah. Like only 40 million Kelvin. And Typically, right. this is yeah. where yeah, this is where prominence is, and like and plasma follows along lines, right? Like and and is, is kind of almost annoyingly because like there's not enough time for it, right? Going into lecture mode of like yeah, like you can see the solar prominences and follows along the field lines and cool. Um, but this is where flares also come across. What does this mean for us, Andine? Uh, so Sorry, we're, you we're, can we're, to me we're at a point of solar minimum, which means that there should be almost no um, uh, sol- sunspots on the sun, right? Okay. Like they, we go through cycles, and we, we should be at a spot where there's almost none, uh, which is why it's strange that we've been seeing these flares anyway. Um, sunspots at at most typically are, and she like scales it down like about this big, right? Like where you know a large sun a, a large sunspot might be the size of the Earth. Mm-hmm. Uh, this this sunspot looks like the size of Jupiter. Um, and there is a pattern of several sunspots around it, like, you know, in, in this strange geometric shape, almost like an octagon. Um, and you see her, like, kind of, like, flip some things and, like, play with some, like, sort of, uh, sort of three-dimensional controls, mm-hmm. and she does an overlay of, of magnetic field, right? So, like, you see, like, the temperature sensor crank, like, you're looking in the millions of degrees now, like, looking at the, the fine sensitivity, and you see <clears throat> around the sun in other areas where it looks like more chaos and loops, and it looks really interesting, but in this area, it looks ordered. Like, it is a strange, um, like, octagonal mm-hmm. uh, shape, and the magnetic field is, is, has a structure to it in a really strange way, you start seeing this, and it's oddly tickling your brain in a weird way. We'll get back to that in a second, though. I'm gonna basically look at Andine and be like, is there any way to, like, know what part of the sun the solar flare beam is gonna be coming from? Because it kind of looks oh, like it might be right there. No, you see her tra- tracking, like, the, the flare is already out. So, the, 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 I mean, it's it's already traveling through the solar system. She's right. like, I think it came from this. Okay. Um, But she, she's looking at it, and she's like, okay, this... That this is terrifying. Look natural. It's she's like I've never seen anything this natural. They're never that big, nor are they this ordered. But she's like, you know, she's doing some calculations. And Nature you see, is like, rarely this ordered. You see her like flip over, and you see like these arrows, what we call vector maps, pop up, like showing the rotation of the sun. And looking at this, she's like, okay, it looks like it's on the equator of the sun. It's over here, and it's traveling that way. The sun takes thirty days to revol- like to to uh, to rotate around its axis at that point. So if we cut in. On the inner side of the sun, from where we are, uh, it should be pointed away from us as we pass by in a couple days. Like I think this is our path that we're looking for. Like if this is what's sending off solar flares at us, that's our best shot. Okay, can so you send that off to Charlie? This is the data that we're looking for. Absolutely. So, bang! You see that pop up on like Charlie's got uh, his like his handheld display. Like you've you picked up one at this point. Um, there's a few around the bridge. Yeah, you know enough, especially if you're hanging out with Andine. Fuck. Yeah. And I blow it up so that you can see it. I mean, I could already see it. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. No, well, he said that I had picked up a handheld Mm -hmm. because they're just kind of all laying around. Well, well, you've like, you know, 3D shot it up. Yeah, I I definitely do that so so we can get a better, larger picture of it. And uh, I don't think it looks any more understandable, bigger. (laughs) It's worse. It is actually significantly (laughs) worse. Uh, I believe that. Caster is just crusty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, why is this helpful? No, no, you, no. I, I don't even know what I was thinking. You're absolutely right, and I just shrink it back down. You're, <laughs> you are, you are it's hearing fine. though. Um, I'm trying to see if I've got a. Here, let's use this as a scale model. Uh, you do see like Andine in the background, like kind of like pop up in like a little visual, like okay, so if this is the solar flare. <laughs> 
<laughs> or this is the, the 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 sun spot, right? Like the size here. I just want to give you perspective. Um, like this would be the size of the Earth. Uh, this in case anyone's curious. Oh yeah, no, this is big. This is big broadcast. Uh, like this would be the Earth by comparison to this thing. Um, yeah. How big's the spot? Oh, no, this is the spot compared to this. Like the sun is 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 huge. This would be that. This is the spot. And this is the Earth compared to the spot. It's like to give you scale on what whatever that means. Okay, so I so so so, so tens Charlie of is of Charlie's across. actively working to not panic. I and like concern. compartmentalizing that, while, well, give me all, a will check. All the while, all the while, well, I don't know what my will is. Honestly, I only have oh, skills. Yeah. Uh, but um, your will is ten, so your uh, your check is thirty. But all the while, all the while that I'm doing this, mm-hmm. I'm I'm entering coordinates. I'm, I'm compartmentalizing as best I can. Uh, so what do you want? So uh, I want you to do a will uh, a will check. So you're you're just roll up percentile. Thirty, yeah, that we're looking for. Uh, sixty-one. Ooh. Uh, so you're you're sweating a little bit. So like, this is going to represent at least for uh, your next roll. Um, you're going to have a minus ten on it, but we'll get back to that after, okay. after we take a break. But first, that's the result. Your speaker has a quick question. As like, Andine sends all this off to everybody. They're basically going to be like, "You are a solar physicist, right?" Yeah. Me or So <laughs> yeah. So um, were you like monitoring the sun when the last solar flare happened? Uh, we, uh, for, I guess we could go back to the data. We've been looking like we, you know. Is there image data? Yeah, there should be. I feel like we should look at that too. Yeah, I mean, if we've, we've been so like stuck in this one. Yeah, absolutely. And you see her like, kind of like go go back and peel back some time, mm-hmm. right? Um, I was just gonna say, can can we hear this broadcasted? Can everybody yeah, hear each other? We're all, we're all listening to the the this. This is a group chat. Yeah, I we mean, can all hear it. we're just like open communication. D- does Charlie feel like we have time for this kind of conversation? Well, we're not doing anything else now that we sent you. That's the... fair. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna and, and we're waiting on how to be restored. I'm, I'm yeah. multitasking. I, I had that. This is also this is just what I do. I research things. So like, if right. I get a bug in my brain, I'm gonna be like, mm, I want to see that. You Actually, know? yeah, that's well. Then I would want you doing that for yeah. sure. <laughs> just in case there's any court, like like uh, minute course corrections. Like if we're adding in like a course, mm-hmm. and you see something from this past solar flare that could cause us to to reroute just a little bit that would save our asses. Yeah, I'd want to. I'm just curious right. if we're gonna see any similar geometric patterns. We, we also, sure. whether we have time or, or not, it mm-hmm. has to be talked about because like we don't, you know what I mean? Like, like we don't have a, time. yeah, we don't have a clear path. Yeah, and I'm I'm actually gonna say that uh, this, this is uh, helping Charlie out a little bit in the sense of if it was silence, you'd be dwelling on this, whatever this, you know, Sci-fi existential horror of that sure. is. You're like, okay, plan action. We're doing something. You're about like, okay, this. We're, we're okay. We're logicking it out. I'm somehow at least able to shut away like the lizard brain side of me and just focus on right, the academic side. Because right? yeah. we're not really clear whether or not this is even a good idea. Like, yeah. it's just like Going kind of the, it's like it. the best yeah. worst idea we've got. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, so I'm gonna say, um, uh, actually, Andine kind of shows you how to work the controls um, okay. and heads back over because they they're like sending like up to minute tel- telemetry to Charlie, um, to which like you know you're still waiting on uh, like power to be able to like do all of the thrusters and the pieces like that's in order to keep the ship together. It's gonna take a lot. We need power, comms three. How are we doing on that? I'm I'm walking as fast as I can. I'm giving her all she's got. I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. And my face gets all weird, and Charlie goes, wow, I actually got that reference. <laughs> uh, Com- comes through. You she see, gotta you, take the strain. You see one. You see one of the humans uh, kind of like fa- fall to their knees. By the way, as they're like start trying to like you know t- together, they're working on some like uh, on some um, some valves, right? And and the robot is starting to become like rickety, uh, even more so. Um, but. We'll get to that, and before we hit the break, I want to finish this with you. Um, roll me a research check. Yay! I, I love know. researching like things. Like Everybody wave to Connor. Connor's on the. Connor, <laughs> we love you. Connor, miss you. He's doing terrible things. Uh, yeah, I'm an eighty. Yeah, eighty. Get 80. it. Wait, what are you doing? You're doing a what? Research. That's a forty-three. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're you're doing this fast. Like you you picked up uh, on. Uh, you're like, oh yeah, I remember that we like the day we did astrometrics training. So you're like, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> and, uh, and you're just like, you know, I you're almost like that. one <laughs> hand is is operating independent of the other hand. Like it's like two of you are navigating this things, thing yeah. appropriately, right? Nice. Um, you're like, sweet. Um, I hope their their eyes are doing that. Too. They are <laughs> <laughs> looking in different directions. That, that can't be good for you. Um, so so a, a couple things happen here. It's, um, it's fine. 
right, yeah. Uh, Frog eyes. So, like, little little bits of information. Like, I'm, I'm going to say, like, you rolled really well, and you also, like, got a, a, a critical success. I forget what they call it. Whatever, that plus over 33. Mm-hmm. So, like, it gives you additional insight into this. So, like, you remember, like, a lot of information, almost on an intuitive level, is kind of, like, filtering into your consciousness. Um, and as you as you flip back to like the first flare, you kind of track it out. You absolutely see uh, this this pattern again. Although you notice that it is not as uh, as developed perhaps uh, as it is now, but you absolutely see this pattern. Um, but but what also sort of filters filters through you is like a series of things that you wouldn't necessarily connect together, right? But it's like it's starting to to like have this vague sense of a pattern and image behind you. Like you remember. Uh, you know, seeing little data logs from uh, from the from the journey, right? For instance, when uh, the the Pollux passed by uh, Saturn, right, did the last gravitational assist, mm-hmm. Saturn was off by by a certain percentage, right? And so, like, you, it moved slightly. Yeah, it, w- it was like in an unexpected place, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so you you peel back like the uh, uh, the time timestamp even further, right? Like well before the flare went off and you you see actually like the, the Pollux go back in time and like move back along its path and trajectory and you're watching the sun kind of uh, develop and you 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 see one little little thing that kind of freaks you out. Okay. Um, it is that you you can't see what it is, but you see um, like an absence of information. Like, you see off to the side of the sun, like, there's background stars, and you just see what looks like a shadow passing in front of the stars. You don't see what it is, but it's like something is eclipsing them, like, blocking them out. Um, and then, just for a split second of data, uh, it, you see it disappear behind the sun. And from what your trajectory data tells you is it looks like it plunged into the sun, whatever it was. But you didn't, we didn't have satellites watching that location to see, like, the impact. Solar cannonball. And that's where we're going to go to break for a few minutes. All right. <laughs> well, that, I would like no, to just say I'm sending all this to, all. like, comms three as I'm, like, finding it, just, like, basically passing that shit to everybody. Like, yeah. I know nobody probably can't look at it right now, but just whatever. Like, this information mm. is being shared. It's just making Charlie sweat more. Yep. Don't look at it. I mean, I'm trying not to. It's like when you're on a high <laughs> spot, don't look down. When you gotta That's the truth. Turn around the sun, you just gotta look at the truth the sun. and move forward. Yeah, I don't. Hide <laughs> the truth from anybody. I find the truth and I pass it on. <laughs> You're I, not responsible. I'm, I'm not I'm, responsible I'm for the impact. I'm typing in coordinates, just you. thinking, not helping. <laughs> and on that, and on that bombshell, <laughs> let's take a break. Uh, we'll see you back in a few minutes. Okay. 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 